The Bible contains many mysteries. One is the king and priest called Melchizedek, and he has perplexed scholars for ages. Melchizedek enters the scene in Genesis chapter 14. Now this is right after Abram rescues Lot from four kings who took him hostage when they looted the city of Sodom. When Abraham defeats the four kings and returns home with Lot, King of Sodom and Melchizedek, who is the king of Salem, meet Abram. The Bible goes on to explain that Melchizedek was a priest to the God Most High. Psalms 110.4 says the priesthood of the Messiah is a priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek. All other Israelite priests were from the tribe of Levite, from the order of Aaron. Jesus' priest not descended from the Israelite tribe of the Levites, but a priest of the order of Melchizedek, who was the priest of the God Most High. The writer of Hebrews cites Melchizedek's unique priesthood as a type superior to the old Levitical order. Hebrews 5.10 says that Messiah is a priest according to a different order, and that would be the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7.11-20 through 20 goes even further, saying that perfection could not be attained from the Levitical priesthood, which was part of the law, so a new priesthood was required. It says that the Levitical priesthood was temporary, but the Messiah's priesthood in the order of Melchizedek is permanent. Obviously, the information is a smack in the face to Old Testament law. The Old Testament sacrificial system, as outlined in Leviticus, was given for Israel to make their relationship right with God. Sacrifices were not only given for the forgiveness of sin, but also for the Israelites to even be able to give thanks to God. If an Israelite wanted to give him thanks for being good and giving life, he'd have to have a free will blood sacrifice, spilling the blood of an animal. Thankfully, this is not the case anymore because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and opened the door for us to have a personal relationship with his father. The book of Leviticus is described by some as a priest handbook. Much of the materials in the book are instructions for how the Levites priests are to lead and intercede Yahweh's people in their relationship with him. A priest would intercede for the people. In the New Testament, Jesus is identified as a great high priest is able to be our intercessor and allows us to actually enter into the presence of the true God ourselves. The laws were given to help the people love the God of Israel with all their hearts and minds. Throughout his epistle, the author of the book of Hebrews reminds his audience that Jesus is superior, and he explains that the new covenant is superior to the old covenant. The superiority of the new covenant rests partly on the priesthood of Jesus, who serves in the order of Melchizedek. Now this order has set aside the Levitical priesthood and will bring perfection to God's people, whereas the priest of Levites just couldn't do it. The author of Hebrews further reinforces the change in the law that came when Jesus became our high priest. We are reminded that Jesus was from the tribe of Judah, and we are told that the law does not give the priestly office to that tribe because the right belonged to the tribe of Levi. However, since Jesus is high priest, but is not from the tribe of Levi, clearly the law has been changed. So, Yahweh's 613 laws are being overturned by the order of Melchizedek, who is the priest of the God Most High. The New Testament perspective of the God Most High appears nine times. The most memorable instance is when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary, who was to give birth to Jesus. When Mary questioned the possibility of her conceiving a baby while being so young, Gabriel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And also in Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus terms his genuine disciples as the children of the Most High. And later when Jesus was about to deliver a demon-possessed man, the chief demon cried out in a loud voice acknowledging Jesus as the Son of the Most High God. Later, the Apostle Paul was about to cast a demon out of a slave girl with the spirit of divination, and the demon acknowledged Paul and Silas as the servants of the Most High. And in Luke 1.32, we read that Jesus shall be called the Son of the Highest. Hebrews 7.12, Jesus is our High Priest of the Bethesda priesthood. 
The name Yahweh is connected to the priesthood of Levi and Aaron and the Old Covenant. That priesthood has changed. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by the Son. Do you want to know the Father? Can you be among the saints of the Most High without knowing His true nature and name? People of biblical times had various views of who that high God actually was. But somehow, I know who He wasn't. <laughs>